presentation will be from Lakshmi Dunmoon. Lakshmi is a nurse consultant to survivability working for Central Northwest London NHS Trust. Lakshmi holds a BSc in Tissue Viability Pathway, an MSc in Advanced Practice and is currently enrolled on a PhD in Nursing Studies with the University of Nottingham. Lakshmi constantly strives to develop her clinical research, contributing to several case studies, best practice statements and research. In 2015, Lakshmi won the Journal of Wound Care Award for the best clinical research for making a difference in patients with chronic wounds whilst using topical oxygen therapy. Thank you, Helen. Good afternoon, everyone. And what a powerful session to follow on. So both the previous speakers has made it very clear why this session is very important. And I'm hoping at the end of this session today, you will be able to go out and reflect on what we're doing and how we, can we improve our practice. So my session follows on the practicalities of how can we put it into daily practice on, on what we do. So the best practice statement, as um, Jackie and Nisha has both taken you through, it highlights the importance of why this issue and provide us clinicians like myself with a practical guidance to aid accurate assessment and diagnosis in all skin tones. So what they want us to know is how do we optimize patient care by improving the outcomes. So what does it mean for clinicians like myself and like you? It is, does actually raise the importance of reflecting on our teaching and training skills like Nisha has um, pointed out in her research. And also it gives us resource as to what do we need to do to make sure that all skin tone are included in our training. And it is also very important to present pictures of different skin tones when we are providing a, a slide or a session to especially junior staff, um, student nurses or you know new, newly qualified stuff because that's what they're going to be doing on the ground so it is that tool that is very important for us as clinicians and this is a time for reflection of how we're doing it in your uh, any session that you're doing wound care with as a mentor as a teacher and as a clinical educator or as a tvn are you actually including different pictures with uh, different skin tones and most importantly i would always say listen to your patient perspective understand their views understand their feelings because yes we do provide holistic assessment but do you consider that skin tone can impact on your assessment as well so assessment what does it need for us as clinicians we are very hands-on clinicians and we know we love a good use of our senses the touch and feel as we say it i know covid impacted on it but that doesn't take us off clinical practice our best practice i would say be it in light skin tone or dark skin tone the use of touch and feel still provides us accurate assessment for example in cellulitis the affected skin will not look red to you in a dark patient skin tone however it will look very tighter or the skin will look a bit more shinier very hot and tender, but this is where the use of senses can be most useful. So the best practice statement say to us, are there any difference in color? Does the skin feel warm or cool to you? Are there any changes in temperature? Does the skin feel spongy or firm to touch? Does the skin look or feel shiny or tight? Or is there any swelling or inflammation? Or how does the overall skin condition looks to you? Compare what's looking good from what's the, where the, the damage or the complaint is. And this is where how we can get to assess the patient and making sure we're capturing damage earlier. And trust me, using your senses, touch and feel, cannot take you to uh, far from that. And in clinical practice, we have started using the color toolbar, but do you use the color toolbar? Do you know that it's used to screen individuals for at, at risk of skin cancer? They're also used for, to identify those needing sun protection. Asking the patient can sometimes be very subjective and the color toolbar is a validated classification tool that shows a range of skin tones, a simple and economical way of assessing skin tone across many settings. I've used it in mental health, in community setting, in nursing homes, and 
it has been very handy because we do work with a multitude of, of um, skin tone across every community settings that I've, I am in. How do we use this color toolbar? It enables us to select the tone that most closely matches the patient inside upper arm. Now, let's look at some most common type of runes and how skin tone can affect us, our assessment as a clinicians and in your daily routine. So just for the purpose of time, I've, sh I've selected three most common uh, wound care, but the best practice statement gives you more information on different. So for pressure ulcer, for example, we know for pressure ulcer, traditionally we've been told, look for red of the sign of redness, use your magic finger, you press it. If it's red, it remains red. Yes, that's your category one. But again, we should be remember that Clinicians have been educated to do that previously, but now is the time to change. If we are not asking clinicians to change how we assess, because if you're looking for redness, we are going to miss the early damage. And we know there are some research that has been published that in dark skin tone, the lower classification of damage, your category one, is very less, but actually the higher category is more. This is because they are missed at early stages. So if we don't look for redness, we use our senses, touch and feel, and assessment, the whole assessment of pressure also, rather than just looking for colors, we can capture these earlier. Similarly for leg ulcers, we know the most common complication is cellulitis. It is important to use the touch and to compare the affected leg to the other leg, rather than just looking, is there any erythema there? Or is the leg presenting differently? Because remember, we I've recently had a patient that come through and we were told that he's got an ischemic leg, but actually the leg, it was just dark skin. And this is why it's really important to be able to compare to the normal leg rather than comparing to the what you think is, is that ischemic. But no, it was just a normal dark skin leg. And diabetic foot ulcers, as we know, very high risk of infection. So any changes should be monitored very closely. For diabetic foot ulcers, we know if there's black or brown eschar over the lying ulcers in patients with dark skin tone, it can be missed. I was also sent a patient with an eschar on the foot that I was told it's dirt on the foot. So this is where it's very, it's vital to, to assess the skin thoroughly to ensure that actually eschar or necrosis is not diagnosed incorrectly. So this is why, for me, these are the most uh, common uh, types that we have, but I think it's really important in any wounds or any patient skin tone, we actually rely on our senses and actually use your color toolbar, get things right. So let's look at the case today. And the patient, uh, both my patients are, have consented to the use of these pictures and they actually know that it is relevant for teaching and training. So as you can see, the first picture is a very traditional category one pressure ulcers that you would see in an ideal situation, a textbook criteria as we call it, right? My second patient is a 26-year-old female who complained of a sore bum and to the staff on the ward following a surgical procedure she's had on a Friday. And she hasn't been able to move independently due to weakness, but her legs was very painful. So the next day on a Saturday, she said to the nurse, my bum feels sore, would you mind checking my skin? The nurse check said pressure, pressure areas check NAD. The second, the, the next day, she complained of sore bottom again, and the, the nurse on Sunday checked and said, pressure areas check, birthmark present, no uh, pressure, air, pressure ulcers NAD. Why would you give a patient a birthmark after 26 years? And obviously, I just happened to be on the ward, and as you know, people think you are the bum nurse. They said, are you the bum nurse? I said, yes, I am. How can I help you? Is that my bum has been sore since Saturday. Would you mind checking? I said, of course. And this is the difference that it makes. I'm not saying because I'm a tissue of ability. It's because of the training that we have had. And it's really important that you know we identify not just going by the redness use your magic finger if it's red it's a pressure ulcer so i did a proper risk assessment of the patient and for me it wasn't a pressure point the patient complained of of pain it when i touch it it was cold to touch it was very painful to touch 
And as you can see yourself in the sacred, it's that it's the sacral shape there. So why would I give a patient a birthmark after 26 years if I had done my ass assessment properly using my senses? You asking the patient the question, she knows her skin better than I do. She would tell you if she's got a, a birthmark or not. So this is where we put um, in practice, we gave her a pillow, show her how to do 30 degree tilt while she was in bed, gave her some barrier cream, 48 hours when we check her after, she was completely resolved. What if I had missed that patient? This is where if we're missing early damage, which is your CAT1, or even the st starting of a pressure damage, that could have escalated and get worse. But for that patient, it was really important because it impacted on her quality of life. The moment I've said to her, you've got a pressure also. She said, what is that? And I say, oh, I'm sorry. It's what we call a bed sore. And the very moment I mentioned that to her, she said to me, oh dear, I'm never gonna get out of this ward anymore. I'll be smelly for the rest of my life. And this is the impact, this is the stigma. But for one minute, let's just forget the pressure ulcer. Let us forget what we call the bed sore. Think about the human being aspect of it. And this is where education is very, very important. We discuss it with the patient. She very rec uh, happily recognized that yes, there is a gap. And then we are most unhappy for to use that picture as a presentation and to make sure that our future generation of nurses, carers, home carers can identify pressure ulcers or wounds on patients with dark skin. So when, what to look when, for when assessing patients with pressure ulcers as a follow-up from that case study, remember the additional indicators of pressure ulcer. As healthcare professional and carers, as I said, we're typically taught, look for redness, use your magic finger, press it. But while it's relatively simple to identify in Caucasian skin, it can prove to be difficult to diagnose accurately when assessing patients with darker skin tone. Hence, you look out for the darker discoloration, look out, is it on a pressure point? Is there any pain and discomfort reported? Was it cold to touch? And all these will help you to make sure you get the right assessment. And obviously communicate with your patient. The previous two um, presenters have actually made me very, very clear that we should make sure that skin tone is very separate to ethnicity. And as clinician, I want you all to have the confidence to talk about this in a professional way. Treat the patient as an individual. Dark skin should not be seen as a challenge in the clinical practice. Remember, the palest and the darkest person will have exactly the same number of melanocytes in the skin. However, it's the production and the concentration in the epidermis, which is a top layer of your skin, that is greater in the darker skin. So if we know our, our topic, if we know our assessment, if we know very well how we're managing the patient and preventing further damage, be it in leg ulcer, being in pressure ulcer, or in a diabetic foot ulcer, the confidence in you will actually give the patient confidence that they're being nursed in, the, in like an individual, and the care is being tailored to their needs. So it's really important that we show that and work in, work in partnership. We don't expect you to know everything. All we want you to know is be confident. If you don't know something, ask. And I ask my patient, do you have a birthmark? No, I don't have a birthmark. And this is where working in partnership is very important. Remember the key word is, there should not be no care about me without me. Patient involvement is very important. Patient and healthcare professional empowerment is essential in this time of age to make a difference. And we have, as educators, clinicians, we have to change the way we teach and assess patients. And we, we just need to reflect every day on what we're doing. Are we doing enough to include these um, difficult conversation in our assessment? And, you know, this is how, to summarize my, uh, my um, slide, I would like to say we can do it. There's a clear need for change, regardless of the demographics. Do not be uncomfortable when you're working with people with dark skin. And do not be colorblind, as Nisha have said. We are all responsible for fostering a change in the culture. 
that eradicates health inequalities. It starts with you all today. Thank you.